Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Now, every single year I do videos on investment plans, at least for the last three years or so. I wanted to do it ever so slightly differently this year because let's just address the elephant in the room. Why not? Plan prices have dropped quite a bit quite a bit. Now, don't get me wrong, in COVID times, they were never going to stay that high. I have to say this. I have to say this. It got silly. Like what I would normally sell a plan for here, I would maybe sell it for four times as much. Like it was just crazy and it wasn't sustainable. So obviously everything's coming down now. And I kind of feel like we're at a point just sort of as the plan boom was starting to take off, those are the prices. There's a few reasons why this has happened, but I'm not going to go into it for today's video. But what I want to do is show you the plants that have still made me, let's just be honest, quite a lot of profit despite the downfall since COVID, whatever you want to call that, the downfall. That doesn't mean to say each plant has made me thousands and not all of these plants are super expensive. There's actually looking at them, there is a really good mix of price ranges on these plants. It's not about the prices people are paying for it. It's actually for a few different reasons. The structure of this video is not going to be like previous investment videos. For example, I used to say, you know, ease of propagation, what is this like? What about the price? What about the market trend? Blah, 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 blah. That's not what this is. This is literally just me telling you about the stuff that's done me really, really well in the shop and some of the reasons why I think that is. So if that sounds interesting for you, then keep on watching. These plants are not in any order at all, okay? I'm literally just gonna pick them up as I see fit. Literally, no order. So let's proceed with the first plant. Please welcome my absolutely gorgeous red crystallinum. That is Anthurium crystallinum. Now then, the care on these, in case you're curious, are no different to a regular crystallinum. I wish I had one to show you. I don't actually think I've got any to hand. They're all too far up on the shelves. But just to put it in perspective, I'm wearing black. That's pretty dark. Is it black? No. Oh my goodness, it's close though, if I just show you that next to me. It's decent, you feel me? It's decent. So this red crystallinum has come from NSC Tropicals. I actually brought this over when I brought over my variegated Gloriosum back in, I want to say 2021? Not entirely sure. I bought a few things over. I think I brought the Delta Force over. I bought this. I bought some other stuff. I bought the Gloriosum over. There's a few things in there. And if you remember, I did make a video about it. But I brought a couple of these in. And since then, I think I sold one as it was. And I've been taking propagations. This guy has never been cut. Hence, he's absolutely huge, basically. But just so you know, that is where they're from. They are the real deal. Now, the cool thing about these plants are they are obviously way darker than a normal crystallinum. I will put a picture up now in front of where I am on the screen of what a normal crystallinum looks like. Now, they are dark, but they're not this dark. They also do not have this awesome redness that is present on the leaf. I say red, it is quite like a berry red. It's not just full on red. They don't have that at all. The care is the same, but the visual characteristics of the plant are different. Also, if I can try and show you the back of this, just to show you the beautiful colors that come from within. And it's a shame we don't have a new leaf on the way because essentially when the new leaves come out, they come out basically a very bright version of this color, a very, 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 very bright cherry red. And they are so sexy. They do cost quite a bit more than a normal crystallinum. They do. It's one of those things. But I think I've made good money on them because nearly everybody has experience with crystallinum and it's a great plant. I totally recommend it for very close to a beginner ant theorem, I'd say. It's not the most easiest in the world, but it's definitely on the easy scale. So I think I've probably done quite well with these because of that reason. So everyone already knows how to care for them. It's not really perceived risk and it looks hella sexy. And when they sell bits of it, they will also make a tidy profit on it. I'm not sure how much these are going for now. I just know that I I've had a really, really good rise out of them over the last, what, two years now. And they're still going strong, to be honest. I could sell one tomorrow for a reasonable amount of money. So these have done me really, really well. If you're wanting to get one, I'm sure you'll find them. I'm not saying they're not around. They are. They will be a bit pricey, but they are just the most beautiful plants. Look how nice this plant is. <gasps> also, how massive is this plant? Let me just hold the leaf like actually in line with my face. Look at how big that leaf is. That's crazy. That's like, that could be a thumbnail. Absolutely stunning plant. Anthurium red crystallinum. Look out for it. It's beautiful. The other leaves are obviously exactly the same. He is flowering. I will gently show you. Nearly everything's flowering in here. It's great. It's great. It's exactly what you want. 
every time I show this plant, I just get a little bit more excited. And I know you do too. Every time I put this plant on camera, people are like, oh my God, what is it? How do I get it? Is it easy? How do I take care of it? What, what is it? Is that real blue? And the answer is yes, it is. It's dribbling all over me. So I will just have to let it dribble. But if I can just come up to the camera, look at how literally amazing this plant is. So this is what's known as Microsorum thailandicum. I believe it does come from Thailand. Not entirely sure, that could just be the name. Also known as a blue oil fern. That's probably what you're going to find it as, if not Microsorum thailandicum. If I show you it up close, because literally look at that. Can we just like, what, what? Ah, oh, we all love this plant. I don't know many people don't like this plant. And I particularly love this plant because it is one of, is it actually the only plant I've ever bought that when they said it was blue, it is actually blue. It's not just blue under a camera flash, for example. You know what I'm talking about, guys. If you've been around for this channel long enough, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But this, literally, guys, I'm under one ring light, one ring light today. If I just hold it up, that's what happens. And if I hold it back, the ring light's not, it's casting a very low light on it and that's the color of it. It really, really, really is that blue. It is so easy to look after, it's crazy. This one has been in pond and it, you know what? It's responded really, really well. I do have some in Lekka and they've grown well as well. Funny enough, I haven't put anything else in the pond. I probably should have. This is the one I've had the longest. This is my personal one. Uh, it's actually a lot smaller than the ones I sell, to be honest. And this is the one that I think started it all for most people about this plant. Because I saw this plant on the darkest corner of Instagram, basically, and I was like, oh my God, what is that? And here we are. So leaves do come in a little bit greeny, but oh, this is actually really good to show you if the camera will let me show you this. You, it might not, but it's actually blue here where it's hardening off and then the tip hasn't quite got there yet. Hopefully you can see that. That's kind of how it comes out. Now you can't really bend these leaves. They are very, very rigid. They, I always say they're a little bit more like the leaves of a Hoya, you know, like Hoya, like Publicalix or something, something like that. But to be honest, even less bendy, you really wouldn't want to bend these. And of course we've got all the beautiful spores on the back of the plant, which hopefully you can see. Beautiful, beautiful, goes over everything. Love it. Absolutely not complaining, love this plant. And I think everyone else does. And on this occasion, I believe I've made good profit out of this plant because of this. Literally because of this, because of the blue. Because it ain't catfishing, it ain't lying. It ain't lying. If you're wondering how I grow this, by the way, it is literally, it's grown at this distance from these lights and maybe from here to here is maybe 60 centimeters. It's just sat growing in the light and it's, it's wow. Look at it. I literally, every single time I hold this up on camera, I fall in love with it a little bit more, literally. So yes, beautiful plant. I think I have a couple coming up at some point. There's definitely one up there, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see what the prices are like now because I have not price checked any of these, remember? I'm just telling you I've done really, really well out of them. So yeah, there he is. One more time. Oh my God. <gasps> Ooh, Microsorum thailandicum, also known as a blue oil fern. The technical name, I do believe, is blue oily boy. That is what he is known as here. So I'm going to pop him back because he's absolutely stunning. Look at that. Oh, that's a thumbnail. Oh, yeah. They're all thumbnails. Beautiful, beautiful plant. And I wanna take a super quick break in between these plants to thank our sponsor for today's video, which is Magic Spoon. Hey guys, I'm so excited today to tell you about a cereal that I'm literally obsessed with and that is Magic Spoon. So a lot of you probably know I'm very big on fitness and going to the gym, both for cardiovascular fitness and I do lift weights as well. I've been working very hard to change my eating habits, reduce my carbohydrates and definitely increase my protein to build more muscle. The catch is this requires a bit more planning when it comes to preparing meals to make sure I stay on track. Since my diet's changed, typical cereal really doesn't fit into my daily macros until I found Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon has around four grams of net carbs, zero grams of sugar, yes, actually zero grams of sugar and wait for it, 13 grams of protein per serving. I actually couldn't believe that it had no sugar when I tried it either. <laughs> 
Not only that, guys, but it is gluten-free, grain-free, with no artificial colours or sweeteners. The cereal comes in flavours such as cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. My absolute favourite is the cocoa. I either have it as normal before breakfast, or when I'm peckish later in the day, I just grab a handful dry for a snack. If you want to try Magic Spoon, click the link in the description to grab a variety pack and try it. Be sure to use the promo code KayleeEllen at checkout to get $5 off any order or go to magicspoon.com forward slash Kaylee Allen. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. So click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen and use Kaylee Allen for $5 off. Or go to magicspoon.com forward slash Kaylee Allen to save $5 today. Thank you so much, Magic Spoon. And back to the video. Right, now where were we? Right, this next plant, it's a little bit weird for me because I can't necessarily tell you why it's done so well for me. It's not necessarily something I have the answers for. But this next plant here is known as Anthurium Selby Silver. Now, I, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest, I don't quite get it. I don't get it, I just don't, I just don't. I, this just sometimes happens in the shop. Sometimes I just think, meh, you know, why, why is that gonna do well? And it just does. And this probably represents a lot of plants that do that. So the main thing about this, and I do think this was supposed to be, is it like a mutant Anthurium crystallinum? I could have that wrong, but essentially it's longer and sort of thinner and the silver on the plant is like way more pronounced, wider, more of it, whatever you wanna call it. I'll just show you this. I do have more silver ones actually. Do I have one round here? Because that would be great if I could show the one that was super, super silver. Because they're all slightly different, which is just, it is what it is. This has got some crispiness on it, but can you see this one here? See this? Yes. So they kind of go a bit like that. They're longer, thinner, and more silver. This one here is up for sale. So that's what that looks like. Very, very pretty though. Let me just pop this one down because we only need the one to talk about it. So I don't know if this is just done well simply because they aren't around much or maybe they're not collected and the people that do are happy to pay for them. I, honestly, guys, I actually can't tell you why this is done well. I literally can't because I think they're nice but I wouldn't say they were anything absolutely stunning. Maybe, just maybe, Instagram is telling a different story. And if I look them up on the internet, I might be like, hey, they're really nice. Maybe they're nicer when mature. I'll be honest, I haven't looked it up. I haven't looked it up. Now I did like these when I got them in, but I just think since then, because I, I must've got these in maybe 2021, don't quote me, I can't remember, but I just think I've got so many veiny, bright, silvery things. It's, it's really hard to, how do I put this? It's really hard to still be taken back by things, right? You just get hardened to it. Like you might see a plant on the internet and think, oh wow, but I might deal with 50 of them. And I tell you something, by the time you've dealt with 50 of them on the daily, they kind of just lose their charm a little bit. It is what it is. It genuinely is what it is. So yeah, Anthurium Selby Silver. Let me know why you think it might have done me really well because I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure why. I can't even remember where I got this from. I think Ben would know, but I can't really remember where I got this thing. We might have bought this privately from somewhere. It's cute. It's really cute, to be fair. That is very sweet. It's just, I look at the other plants here and I think, oh yeah, well, I see why that's done well. I see why that's done well. Not so much with this one. Not so much with this one. This next plant has had the most... I don't know, tumultuous journey on the internet. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a few plants notably out there that have, but this is definitely one of them. This is definitely one of them, especially in the variegated world, okay? What do you think it might be? Any guesses at all? Think really expensive auctions, followed by stupid names, followed by price drops, followed by, you could argue, tissue culture debates at one point. But this here is the wonderful, and it is wonderful. I'm not about to down talk this plant. This is Raphidophora tetrasperma variegata, sometimes for some reason known as Monstera minima. It's not a Monstera. I repeat, it is not a Monstera. It's completely different. It is Raphidophora. But nonetheless, it it's really cute. I think people like this because it stays dwarf. Why do they like the variegated one so much? And why have I done so well with it? Well, I think, how do I put this? It was falsely inflated to quite a high degree. 
Okay, okay. We, we know it was. We know it was. There's a few notable individuals that tried to make out that this was absolutely, there was hardly any of them and it was such a big deal and because the variegation did this and not this, it was worth thousands more, all right? No. Variegation. Oh my God. If between one plant and another, like my variegated gloriosum back there, the same plant is throwing me half moons. It's throwing me marble. It's throwing me everything. You can't, you can't buy plants like that, guys. You can't. You can if you want. You can if you want. Just don't. Don't do it. It's probably not worth the extra money. It's just not. But anyway, due to that, we did have that auction, which I think was in New Zealand. And I feel like it was in 2020, maybe 2021. I want to say it was 2020. Could be wrong on that. And I can't remember how much that sold for. It sold for an absolute ton. But here we are now, and they're actually very affordable. Now, apart from the whole hype versus massive drop and everyone just wanted one, I think people bought them for a lot of reasons. But I think the reason they've held is because one, variegated, very cute. Two, they're smaller than a variegated Monstera. Hence, we do tend to call them Monstera Minima, right? This is a lot more manageable than a big Monstera. Not everyone has the space for it at all. They're easy to grow. They're really easy to grow. Like, Jesus, they are really easy to grow. Why? Because the normal Raphidophora is in garden centers. Therefore, it has to be easy. It has to be tough. It's stood the test of time for years now, and it always will be in stores. Heck, eventually, they might end up being in stores. Do you know what I mean? You just don't know. That's a long way off because I don't think growers are trying to grow them and propagate them. It's not the same as variegated Monstera. For whatever reason, variegated Monstera is just like, it's just some sort of symbol of rare plants in a lot of cases. So I don't think it's going to be like that. But I think the reason they've done well is a lot of people probably thought they would never get one and then they became affordable and everyone went, hell yeah, hell yeah. That and also, obviously, in terms of, for me, propagations don't fail. It's rather than for a tetrasperma. They just don't. It's rare. It's rare that they fail. Do you know what I mean? It grows pretty quickly as well. This one here, if I show you this, See that there? That has been cut. It's just cracking on, really. And it's been cut, I must highlight, from two leaves at the bottom there that aren't incredible. But now we have these. Beautiful. And this is what I'm talking about with the variegation, guys. Look at the, the type of variegation, the shape of the variegation on here. And then look what it's made me. It's made me bloody half moons, right? So just be really careful about what you pay for with variegation. Honestly, I could do a whole video just ranting about variegation. Let me know if you want one, because I'm happy to do one. But yeah, I've done really well out of this plant. I think it's a mix of reasons. I really do. Gorgeous plant. Do recommend them. Really like them. If I've ever spoken badly of them in the past, it is literally, it's not the plant itself. It was the artificial inflation around it, which I know that happens on the internet. I totally understand. But this was, this was aggressively done. I think there is a bit of a difference between just saying something and everyone then wanting it to actively trying to make out that there's only like one of them in the world when that's just stupid. Variegation does this all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's really good. He's in Pond, by the way, but I think all the rest are in Lekka, so I haven't found any specific difference with them. I think they both grow fine. One last go at how pretty this is. Absolutely gorgeous. Probably needs a chop. Right, next up is one of the plants that could quite possibly have done me almost the best on this list. Honestly, and it's not, it's not the most expensive plant at all. I'm not saying it's cheap, but it's not super expensive. And I just, I love this plant. There's so many things I love about this plant. I'm going to hold this up for you. It's variegated, but it's not the most variegated one I have. I have some gorgeous plants up there. I have some gorgeous plants up there. I've actually shown it to you because it's one with just a little bit larger leaves. So you can sort of see sort of what it's going to turn out like, if I'm honest. So I just want to show you this. Can you tell what it is? Some uh, some regulars of the channel will know what this is, but let me just try and hold it like that. Can you see this? Can you see it? How pretty is that, please? So this is why I wanted to show you this one. And don't get me wrong, it's a very pretty leaf, but it's just starting to show you the shape here. Oh my goodness. Even that's a thumbnail. And this is why, this is why I do well out of these plants because they're so thumbnail worthy. But this here is what is known as Philodendron SP Tropicals. And you probably know this if you watch the channel regularly. I bought this. I feel like I bought everything in 2021. Maybe last year, maybe it was 2022 last year. But I bought this in and it was just one vine. It was one vine. And the variegation was, it was all right. It was probably a little bit like this. I wouldn't say there was absolutely tons of it. And literally, guys, I've got half moons. I've got like three quarters of a leaf. I've got some beautiful leaves out of this. 
And it's weird to me, but it behaves in terms of propagation and how easy it is to grow. It behaves a little bit like a philodendron burly marks. And right, so I'll explain what I mean by that because you're probably looking going, what? Literally, I know it doesn't grow the same way. The vines are the vines, right? It's very, very thin. But the leaves are very, very thin. Like I honestly, they are paper, paper thin. And you'd think that would just make it really annoying. But for whatever reason, it's tough as hell. It's tough as hell. And I don't think I've ever had a failed propagation of this. I, and I'm speechless because I always get fails on something. Something always fails. Like one out of 10 propagations should fail, right? It's just, just what happens. Not with this. This has been cut a couple of times. There is probably, you might be able to see, there is a cut at the bottom there. And it needs cut again. And honestly, it, it is growing um, quite green now. And that's fine. I've genuinely not cut this so that I can show you today. But I need to tell you how well this plant has done me. Honestly. Now, in this case, what does that mean? This probably could just be because not a lot of people have it because it's weird and wonderful and there's probably only a couple around and yes, there will be more in time when people propagate them and sell them. But until that time, I don't think people actually know what philodendron this actually is underneath, which helps, I think, definitely helps. Because kind of like, well, what is it? Personally, I don't think I've ever seen the, you know, the all green version of what's underneath. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Sorry, I'll try and rotate it for you. If you think you know, you know, let me know in the comments. But I think that's why. In this case, what is it? I must have it, people don't have it sort of thing. I'm genuinely just going with that for this. But I've made great, great profit on it considering I bought the one vine because honestly, when I bought that one vine, I never thought I'd get decent propagations out of it. And I have two trays up there. Now don't get me wrong, that's been propagated over a long time. I'm not saying it hasn't, but this thing does grow quickly. So if you're ever interested in one, I genuinely do recommend them. They're absolutely tough as nails. Don't be sort of put off by how flimsy they look because they're absolutely incredible. Like one of my toughest plants in this shop is this. How beautiful is that? Oh, and he's really cute, isn't he? I'd love to see what shape he ends up because he looks quite cute at the minute. So we'll see. I'll keep you updated on him, but genuinely one of the best profit makers in my shop. Hands down, hands down. Right then, let's see what you make of this one. So this boy here, I will explain the variegation in a moment, and he is quite young, but this boy here, if I hold him up in front of me, this is, can you tell? Yes, you should be able to tell now. Plant connoisseurs will know exactly what this is. This is Philodendron Gloriosum Variegatum, and it is incredible. And I'm cheating here a little bit. I'm cheating here a little bit in this video. This plant has made me some cash, but it hasn't necessarily made me the cash retail. This plant has made me the cash. It's not wholesale. Selling it privately to nurseries, basically. Um, I think I sold one of the, well, I sold a couple of these, but to one party in, I think it must have been 2021. And it was probably the most money I've sold any plant for hands down times 10. No problem. Like it was just, it was a lot, but I understood why. It's because there wasn't many of them. The nursery wanted to get going on them. And people might know who it is that I sold it to. I'm not really sure. Actually don't know. Didn't make any attempt to hide it because it's not like that. But that's what's happened with this. So it has made me a ton of money. It's not super stable. And I have to tell you that because I'm not in the spirit of lying to you. It's not the most stable plant in the world. I just took a picture this morning though of some of my propagations that I've kind of grouped together and they look so cute. So, so cute. So what I want to actually explain to you is the variegation on this plant, because you might think, oh, right, okay, is this two different growth points? What? Because this here is, and I mean, literally, it is the most beautiful lily white variegation. How beautiful is that? And this here, you may notice, is kind of yellow. It's not full yellow, but it's pretty yellow, right? I don't know why that doesn't want to focus. Are you going to focus? Please. Come on, give it a moment. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Is it focusing now? I can't tell. Hopefully it is. That's the best I can do, guys. But yes, you will see if I just keep holding it like this. These are basically two different colors. And what I do believe happens is the plant comes in and it looks a little bit like this and it hardens to this. This is just what happens. And over time, this should, should turn white. So I just wanted to explain why they were a little bit different, but oh, let me tell you, it has been a journey to get to this point. I, I must tell you, I don't just have half moons. And if you know anything about me, you'll know that I don't love half moons because they're not easy to propagate from. They're not very reliable. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. But I have loads of different ones. I have ones with variegation just around the edge. I've got it coming coming around most of the leaf, actually. To be honest, I don't know why I'm looking back. You will see on the image that I'm showing you 
if I just stand here again so I can pop it in, you will see that. And I have the most beautiful picture of a leaf that is just unfurling in the moment and it's sort of marbled all over. It's incredible. And again, this goes back to what I was saying about variegation, guys, and it is chaotic and anything can happen on the same plant. Always remember this. Please always remember this. If you take one tip from today, let it be that. So yeah, this plant has made me good profit. It does sell retail. I don't often sell them just because I am trying to get very good levels of variegation up because it, it hasn't been the easiest. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm pretty sure that other growers have found the same thing. I think it's just a thing of these plants. They're not the most stable. Not the most stable. Are they worth it? Yes absolutely but they are not the most stable but it's absolutely beautiful and as you've seen from the picture i do have more than this this is just this is a really good example of the two colors on the same plant so there you go variegated gloriosum absolutely stunning i need to grow one quite large i do have a sort of large one but there's only like a patch of variegation on like the edge of the leaf it's not quite as impressive as this but i will keep an eye on them for you but i don't know if i could do a video here without mentioning this plant because this plant is incredible and it has done me so so well so so well for the last year or so nothing lasts forever don't get me wrong but honestly i've had a great run with this plant i've had a fantastic run so what is it it is philodendron whipple way and it is awesome because it just grows all these beautiful colors. So leaves start by coming in a kind of pinky color. Hopefully you can see. And they, they sometimes come in pinky. They sometimes come in white. Kind of depends on your conditions. For me, I tend to get them coming in pinky. That's fine by me. Not complaining about that. And they very, very slowly fade down. Except they really, like they really slowly fade down. If you've had something like a, a red moon or a ghost or something else like that, right? And you think, oh, it's lovely, but it actually fades quite quick. One, sort of dependent on conditions, but two, these guys just stay for ages and ages and ages and ages, as evidenced by these leaves. These are really old leaves on the bottom, hence they're larger and I've obviously propagated from it. This is like the lowest leaf here and it's turning slightly there, but all of these other leaves look They've just sort of stayed like this. I have the cutest, where has it gone? I have the cutest leaf here. Look at that, with a little patch of green variegation on it. That's adorable. It's not necessarily what you can expect from the plant, by the way. What I would say you can expect is just these little sort of flecks in the leaf. I wouldn't expect big patches. Of course it can happen, and I'm looking at a couple of whipples down there that have that, but generally that's not what you should expect. It's a bit like having a, a Monstera Thai constellation and expecting nothing but big chunks of, of cream, right? You shouldn't expect that from a tie. What you should expect are all the flecks. This is kind of like that. But you should absolutely expect some beautiful cream colors, a little bit of minty green, because that is definitely going minty green there. That's probably the greenest one I've got, which if you see that, that's kind of what they go to. I don't think I've had a Whipple yet. Sorry, this is very wobbly in the pot because it's a new propagation. I don't think I've had a Whipple yet that has just gone green. I'm looking down there and there's nothing that's just green. It still remains a really frosted green. And that is just amazing. Now, if you have a leaf like three years, maybe it does go green. But honestly, in the foreseeable future, as you could probably tell, they do not go green. And I think that is why this plant's done well. To be honest, this is all about the color again. In the same way with our Microsorum Thailandicum, you know, I'm just going to pull this out. This is doing my head in. Sorry, guys. Let me just pop this here. That's just annoying me. And it literally has one tiny root. So I will just pop it out here. But hey, they're, they're tough. They're tough. So yes, very much like with the Microsorum Thailandicum, this is, I think this is a color thing. If you ask me why I think this is sold well, this is a color thing because that's quite special. And I don't know of any other philodendron that look like this. This is quite unique. And I think if you are looking for one, absolutely recommend them. They're a climber, but they're, they're, the space between the nodes is very short. I can show you this here. You see that? Very, very short. Very short indeed. Clearly, they propagate quite well. I propagated this maybe about mm, four days ago. So obviously it hasn't grown, but it hasn't died. It hasn't changed form at all. It's still super tough. Not a problem. So I do recommend them even still. They're absolutely beautiful. You can probably get them in different sizes now. You might even find a one leaf cutting because I know I did it points, but they're just, oh, I can't speak highly enough of this plant. I just I have to show you this again because it actually is really cute. Oh, look at it. Oh, philodendron whipple way. Absolutely stunning. Totally worth it. If you like milkshake looking plants, then this is absolutely the one for you. You look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Oh, 
Oh, underside, I don't know why I didn't show you the underside of the leaf, why not? You get this on the undersides. It's very, very pretty. Doesn't, does it stay? No, I mean, there, there's a, that's that minty green leaf, it hasn't stayed there. But generally speaking, there's not a lot you don't want from this plant, do you know what I mean? I, I really like this. If you're a fan of philodendron Florida ghosts and things like that, this is kind of like that on steroids. It's really, really good. Completely recommend, and I think other people have genuinely fallen for the way it looks. Absolutely beautiful plant. So not only is this next plant one of my favorites in this shop, but it genuinely surprised me. And I'm I'm still shocked at one, the yield I get off this plant, and two, just how many people love it and how many people always buy it. Genuinely, I love this plant so much. I love this plant. I love how it feels. I love how it looks. I love how easy it is to propagate. I love how fast it grows. It's honestly, guys, it's a winner. It's an absolute winner. So this beautiful boy here, and he is quite big and he's very wobbly. I just think he's too big for his pot now. We need to sort him out. This beautiful boy, here is Syngonium chiapensi variegata, which is basically variegated Syngonium chiapensi. Now, I always, always, always go on about how these leaves feel because they're amazing. And the best way I can describe it, well, that's a bit new, doesn't really count. They need to harden off a bit. Rubbery, literally rubbery. And they're so tough. Ah, oh, they're so tough. They grow so, so well, probably because it's a Syngonium. And I've ranted on about Syngonium so much in my videos. You know I have, but they're so easy to propagate. Not every Syngonium is, but honestly, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, probably are. This is one of them. Because look, I propagate from this plant a lot, by the way. There's a cut at the bottom. Can you see that? And can you see what has occurred from that? The plant thought, all right then, I will just give you two plants. But not only will I give you two plants, they will both have decent variegation on. This comes from this side of the plant, and this comes from the other side of the plant. Oh, and then there's a bonus white one at the back there. How good is this? How good is this? And you can probably tell by the way that it gives me aerials in here. There you go. It's just like, that's ready to cut now. This beautiful top cutting here, that one there, because that's the newest leaf. This beautiful top cutting here, that's ready to just cut again and propagate again. And by the time I get the roots to the point I'm happy with, I'm telling you now, it'll be twice as tall. And that's what keeps happening with these plants. They do me so, so well. Now, why do I think this has done well? I don't just want to say appearance. I actually want to say that it, it makes other people money as well. And I'm not saying everyone just buys plants to sell them. So you don't need to think that. But in this case, because it's so easy, I do feel like a lot of people, if they wanted to make a quick buck, they could just go and then sell them. Like a lot of people could just sell that there as it is. You know, if you just cut this here, you could just be like, right, well, it's top cutting, but it's got really good roots. I've put it in moss, make your best offer. Do you know what I mean? It, it just sells, they just sell themselves. The way they feel are incredible. I like it so much. I've taken a cutting of, not from this plant, obviously, as you can tell, but from a different plant a few days ago, and it went all green, just reverted. Couldn't see anything in the node. Not that I would throw it away anyway, but I have definitely, definitely kept it because I'm so obsessed with the plant. I love how it feels, it's beautiful. And I think I kept it even more because it was actually bigger. So the leaves are sizing up even more. Oh, I love this plant so much. This obviously will get cut. This this is not something I would sell on. This would I would lose money if I sold something this variegated because someone else could buy this, a shop, anything, and, and just make a ton of money on it straight away. So I will cut this and I will keep growing them. I tend to sell these as like a two leaf thing when I sell them, which is essentially the head cutting or a leaf and then a, a new leaf or two that's come from that. So if I wanted to sell this, obviously I'd cut that there, you know, probably leave it. Would I even need to leave it a month? I don't know, but we'll say a month and then send it out. Sell it and send it out. But it's absolutely beautiful. If you haven't felt one before, please, 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 garden center, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's variegated. Just please go up to it and have a little feel and you'll be like, oh, she right though, because it's really nice. I could I could touch that all day. Absolutely beautiful. Let's have a little, little fashion shoot with it. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. I'm having to like cock my hip because I'm too tall for this. It's so pretty. Oh, look. It's such a cute plant. Syngonium chiapensi. It's done really, really well. A lot of it, I think, is for other people's investment's sake. Obviously, it's good looking and it propagates really fast. I think that's probably the crowning reason why this has done so well. It just grows so fast. It's hard not to make money off it. And there you have it. There are some of the plants in this shop since the downturn of plant sales that have consistently made money. Is it everything? No, there are other things, but these are things I thought were like really, really, really good sellers, really good sellers. 
If you want to see any more investment related stuff, let me know. I'm asking because I don't know if that's something that is still of interest to people because obviously the market has changed. I don't know if you guys still want to invest in plants and make money off them if you're not bothered anymore. Do let me know. I won't be offended either way. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Personally, for me, I have to keep going anyway, so I will always find something to invest in. But if you want to see a video on that, let me know. I'd be more than happy to make one. That's it for this week's video, guys. A special thank you to Magic Spoon. Literally, I've had it... When, when did I eat my last bowl this morning? It's one o'clock now, and I think I ate that at like 8 a.m., and I'm, I'm just starting to get peckish. Absolutely brilliant. And it's probably because of the protein in it. Don't know if you guys know this, but the more protein you eat, protein is very satiating, so it keeps you full. So it actually does keep you full. And I absolutely love it. And I'm running out of my favorite flavor and I'm really sad about that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Any requests down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.